Let's look at how you can set up BitLocker. Here we are in Windows 10. Remember, BitLocker comes included free in only a few versions. It comes in the Ultimate and Enterprise editions of Windows Vista and Windows 7, and the Enterprise and Pro editions of Windows 8 and 8.1, but not the Home editions. On Windows 10, it's available on Enterprise, Pro, and Education editions, but not the Home editions. And I've not tested BitLocker out on all those different versions, so there may be some slight variations between them. I'm not actually sure. But this version here is Windows 10. And to see whether or not the version you have will work with BitLocker, simply right-click on your C drive and see if you have this option here, turn BitLocker on. If you do have that, congratulations, you have BitLocker. If not, then you're gonna to need to upgrade in order to get access to BitLocker. So let's turn on BitLocker, simply just click here. Now, as you can see here, it's saying this device cannot use a TPM. So if you do not have a TPM, you're going to get this message here and you're going to need to change some of the settings in order so that you can use it without a TPM. And to do that, you need to go down here and you need to type in gpedit.msc and you'll see there you've got the gpedit. Click on this which will bring this up and you need to go on local computer policy, administrative templates, Windows components, BitLocker drive encryption, operating system drives, and then require additional authentication at startup. Double click on this. So this is if you do not have a TPM. Click enable and apply. Okay, then we'll go back, right click, turn on BitLocker. And there we go, we're presented with a couple of options for authentication. Now, if you do have a TPM, you will not get presented with these options. If you have a TPM, by default, BitLocker keys are stored in the TPM and it doesn't require users to enter a passphrase when booting up. This means your disk automatically unlocks just by powering on your device, which is an option actually that you do not want because an attacker with physical access could attempt to extract the secret key from memory using attacks such as a cold boot attack and evil maid attack. So as I said, with TPM, you will not get this screen. When you don't have TPM, you will get this screen. I recommend for now, you enter a password. Let's put a password in here. This needs to be long and complex. And we discuss the details of what long and complex means in its own video. Now I've got the option for a recovery key. If you save one here by your Microsoft account, that means Microsoft will be able to decrypt your drive because the key will be stored on their servers. If you're only concerned about thieves and your device being stolen, then perhaps that's a viable option. But if you are more concerned and want more serious encryption, either don't back one up and simply make sure you remember your password or save your recovery key to a file to another secure location using this option here, or even print it and keep it somewhere extremely safe. But storing it on a secure location on one of these is probably best. So let's save one to file now, and it will need to be a way from the drive that is encrypted, otherwise it simply won't work. So I'm saving it there. And that is what the recovery file looks like, the recovery key. Let's click next. The best option for security here is to encrypt the entire disk, but that is slower. But as it says here, it's best for PC and drives already in use. So if you've already got sensitive data on this drive, then you want to select this option here. I'm going to select this option just for the demo for speed. I'm going to do a system check. 
and you can see that message you need to restart and when it reboots it will start doing the encrypting of the drive in the background so I'll restart this and because I don't have a TPM on this and I'd already entered a password, I'm now being prompted for the password. And this is what the BitLocker password looks like once you set it all up. So I'm going to enter that now. Now, if I right click on here, I can see I've got manage BitLocker instead. I've also got change BitLocker password, manage BitLocker. If you installed BitLocker and you do have a TPM, we want to add authentication now other than TPM only. So let's go here and type in gpedit.msc, as you can see there. And we want to go to local computer policy, administrative templates, Windows components, BitLocker, drive encryption, operating system drives, and then require additional authentication at startup. And you want to set this to enabled. Then within the BitLocker options, you can select your authentication method, whether it be pin or USB startup key. As I've said, TPM plus PIN plus CCID USB key is the strongest authentication combination. But if you're only concerned about the device being lost or stolen and the data accessed when that happens, then a strong password is sufficient against this level of adversary. Setting up TPM plus PIN plus USB startup key authentication isn't available certainly as of recording to set up via the GUI. So you're going to have to do it via this command here, this manage dash BDE command. And this is the sort of command that you are going to need. But I recommend that you read up on the latest way of doing this if you come to want to do this. And there is also a link here that I would recommend that you read, which will take you through how to configure the TPM pin and USB startup key authentication combination all three at once. This provides you some of the basic options if you just run the command. But again, like I said, I suggest you search for the latest way of doing it. And back to here, you can suspend the protection because it is currently going through encrypting the disk. You can back up your recovery key again, which we've already done. You can change the password because we've got a password on this. We can remove the password and we can turn off BitLocker completely. And there's TPM administration as well here if you have TPM. And within the local group policy editor, there are also a number of configuration changes that you can make. For example, you can change the encryption from 128 to 256 using the choose drive encryption method and cipher strength. Click here, enable, and then you can change to 256 bit here. This is going to slow your device down. But generally for disk encryption, I would recommend 256 bits as this future proofs you against potential attacks. Although if you're using BitLocker, you probably don't have high concerns about privacy and anonymity. You can check the status of BitLocker if you type in manage-bde-status. And I can see here this is currently AES128. That will obviously change to 256 if you change the encryption and we can see it's password and numerical password. We go back here, go to operating system drives and you've got things like allow enhance pins for startup. You can enable this. This will permit the use of characters including upper and lower case letters, symbols, numbers, etc. Apply that. So a few settings there that you may want to play with. And if you want to find out more about those settings, check out this link here. So that's BitLocker and how to set BitLocker up. Hope that's helped.